found one. We have all heard before that there are not enough marriageable black men, but nobody has ever asked whether or not there's enough marriageable black women. Now, let's just be honest, y'all. Black women, we are the most overweight, some of the Ooh, most Lord, unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, we are the most in poverty. We have some of the highest rates of single parent households. And listen, we are not known to have the best attitude or even the best decorum. If I see another twerking video, Bruh. I'm gonna be so upset. So Sit with me. Let's get on with it, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's we can relax, 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 have fun, have fun, fun, get a good get laugh, a good laugh, get, laugh, laugh, get information, get information, 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 and enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. I, I, I need to do what I do. Sigma man. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you already know who it is. It's your host, Nigel McKnight of Sigma Male Diaries. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very interesting video with three women briefly discussing, like, being submissive and cooperative. How is part of a woman's nature? It's actually quite feminine. But why do some women take the word submissiveness as a form of slavery or you're a prisoner? How does that make sense? Can anyone make sense of that? Is it because the women that hear that word feel as if they don't have to cooperate with a man? Or because they rather utilize their selective and conditional femininity based upon if they feel that they respect that man or if he have enough money or if he's six feet or if he have a mansion or if he have expensive exotic cars. But ladies and gentlemen, these women is going to pretty much scratch the surface and let you women know out there that it's not bad being who you created and intended to be. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get best, to the get best, show. Best. We have all heard before that there are not enough marriageable black men, but nobody has ever asked whether or not there's enough marriageable black women. Now, let's just be honest, y'all. Black women, we are the most overweight, some of the most unhealthy. Uh, we are the most in poverty. We have some of the highest rates of single parent households. And listen, we are not known to have the best attitude or even the best decorum. If I see another twerking video, Bruh. I'm gonna be so upset. So like, let's, let's just keep it real, y'all. Yeah, men have their own stuff that they can work on, but black women, we are not perfect without our own issues. So I think a better strategy would be to actually focus on our own selves, focus on the things that we can improve, and we'll get so much better results. And at that point, we'll actually start to attract what we are. Because like I said, if we're attracting Desties, what does that say about us? Really submit the way that I see it, the way that I understand it, is just recognizing and acknowledging the role that a man has in your life acknowledging and honoring the role that my husband has in my life means that okay there's going to be certain things that he's good at certain things that god has revealed to him and i respect and i honor that even if i don't necessarily see it at that moment or agree it, i respect and honor that okay this is his place this is his position and so i think we really got to take the fear out of something that is actually quite natural and actually is for our benefit because i think a lot of these things that we complain about not being protected um not being provided for all those things that we oftentimes hear being complained about if we just essentially understood the basic principle of submission then we wouldn't even be having those conversations because we would be operating in that manner and then there would be the natural byproduct would be protection the natural byproduct would probably be provision all those different things so i i really think we have to start to revisit um the, what this word actually means because like I said, it's, it's gotten such a negative connotation and in actuality it's actually something that when done properly and, and done in the right context i believe is is really really actually for the benefit and for the improvement of women and also for the benefit of men round three some of y'all out here dating the same man over and over with a different face acting like men ain't shit all men are the same no sweetie all the men you date are the same and all the men you go after ain't shit so why don't we pause figure out what it is about you that's attracting the ain't shit type of dude and what it is about them that's attracting you about niggas ain't shit you need to get a handle on your motherfucking life and take some responsibility bitch what you mean to say is all the niggas you fuck with ain't shit you need to figure out what it is about your pussy
pussy that keep attracting ain't shit niggas. Fix it. Change it. And then maybe you'll get a dude who's worth your time. Final round. I'm hearing a lot of emphasis on the financial responsibilities of a man um, and basically making judgments based off of his paycheck. I'm just going to throw out his paycheck. I'm just going to throw out the caution to that because as with anyone else, remember that when you are talking about how much a man makes today, him making six figures today doesn't guarantee that for life. And likewise, him making $50,000 or less, if that's what you deem below your bar, um, that doesn't mean that that's all he'll have the potential to make. So stop just thinking with, you know, what's in his wallet today and start thinking about the values and the morals. And do you share those things? Are you like minded? Do you have the same goals? Do you want the same amount of kids? Do you believe in the same things? Do you want to follow? Does he want to lead? Those types of things should be discussed. Those types of things should be deal breakers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of leading forward to what the young lady probably was just saying about looking into a man's, you know, future or potential and all this other stuff and not having conversations about what it really takes to really be a family. This is from the late Kevin Samuels, may he rest in peace. And this is um, a video from one of my most uh, recent uploads when I stated that the woman couldn't handle the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what he had to say. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. I mean, average people get average people. Yeah. What's an average? What's the average black man making in this country? Um, you said fifty thousand. So. Yeah. Well, actually, it's forty-two, but fifty is still. I mean, uh, how old are you again? Twenty-eight. Uh huh. Have you ever dated a man making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? I have. How long ago was that? Um, I mean, most of them. Hold on, hold on. When I say date, I mean, see, did you just roll your eyes? You said what? Did you just roll your eyes? <laughs> no, no, no. That was, I was thinking. I was okay. like thinking. Okay. When I say date, I meant y'all were Facebook, you know, this is my man. He's claiming you. I'm not talking about he's got another girlfriend, y'all monogamous. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you ever dated a man making that kind of money? Yeah, the last guy I dated. Uh how long how long did you guys date? Um, we were friends for a while and how so long we, did y'all date? Uh for like a year. All right. And why didn't that go anywhere? He he um I think because of his um, earning potential he got like I feel like so he was like a plastic surgeon and I feel like he start so we started dating when he entered residency and like I just feel like he got big headed like he realized like all the women that were chasing him and he's like no 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 <laughs> no he, he I guess no no listen okay listen excuse me we had a difference in values. Well, I'm not really, not really, because you're talking about the way he started looking at his potential the same way you rolled your eyes and I said, my black man made 40,000. No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. What do you think about these three ladies and what they said? Well, it was actually four segments, but you know, two of them was from the first lady. But far as um, being cooperative and submissive, is that technically an issue? Is that actually being a slave by saying, hey, I'm going to give in to my feminine nature. You know, I want a husband. I want to be a wife. I've been raised to be a wife. I have the qualities of a wife that a man will value. It's not that he values the woman. He values the qualities within that woman. That's why, that's why it's very important and imperative that you attract who you are and understand what it is that you're looking for and who you're looking for. And not only that, but why? What's the attendant purpose? What, what would that mean when you go out on the market and you find somebody 
And then you say, you know, this is what I want to be fulfilled. And this is who I want to fulfill this in my life. Should men and women both ask, what did you have to bring to the table? Or should men and women be more cooperative with one another? And I say that because there's a lot of men and women out there that haven't been raised in a two-parent household. Some of them have, but most of them are not. So they grow up with this whole mindset of worrying about themselves. Thinking selfishly. Me, me, me. My, my, my. I, I, I. You know, but sometimes throughout the course of life, I do understand why certain people may be that way or think that way. And it's because they haven't been structured, they haven't utilized self-discipline, and they don't know they work. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have anything you'd like to add to this video, or if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said, feel free to leave a couple comments, and I'll be sure to get back to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching, and this is your host, Nigel McKnight of Sigma Male Diaries. Y'all stay safe and be blessed, and you already know. But then. Thank you.